Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's very rare that the conference uh, chair is able to introduce the next speaker by saying that he looks like him, but we can do that here today. Ladies and gentlemen, just uh, to really introduce, when we launched at the parliamentary event in uh, April 2014, I closed that event by saying that a mentor of mine gave me the phrase, real lasting change happens one on one, one by one, and then in partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please put your hands together for said mentor and, and welcome Norman Drummond to the stage. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I, and patron and chairman, he is my patron and chairman, and I'm very proud of him. Um, when Nelson Mandela became the first uh, democratically elected president of South Africa, he was wont in introductions to speeches to say something along these lines. With his characteristic modesty and his uh, sense of humor, he'd say, now some of you may know who I am, despite perhaps being the most uh, well-known face in the world. And then he would also, even in Pretoria, when the changeover of government and he was setting new standards, when people came into his office, he would go towards people. I wonder how many of you get up when people come into your office. I wonder how many of you go and shake them warmly by the hand and look them in the eye and really properly greet them. And Nelson Mandela would say to whoever it was, what an honor, what an honor. What an honor it is for me to be here today to herald the ongoing progress and development work of the Scottish Centre for Conflict Resolution, which I obviously hear a lot about and have uh, monitored with great admiration over these past few very successful years. So congratulations to all involved and congratulations to all of you who are in the world of mediation. I got involved in mediation some 20 years ago. I was the BBC governor and chairman of the BBC here in Scotland and I felt a calling during my latter years there to go into the world of coaching and mediation. And uh, John Sturrock, who then some years later, he was at the Faculty of Advocates at that time, John Sturrock of Core Mediation, he encouraged me to, that if you're going into that work, you need to, to qualify as a mediator. So I took myself off at some expense, it has to be said, to an international course in Switzerland. And there the first few days were absolutely paralyzing because these suits, these suits who understood litigation, who understood arbitration. They were like bully boys in suits and bully girls too, because that was their world. The world of litigation and arbitration, they could get things nicely tacked off, as uh, Charlie was saying earlier, you know exactly what I'm meaning. And then it came to the uh, initiation and the learning of how to mediate. And I can only say, and it'll be no secret to Charlie and others in the room, that those litigators from their fast London and Edinburgh and international European firms were at a loss. Those arbitrators who were used to doing a lot of listening and say, I decide, they were at a loss. They had to learn, if you like, a whole new way of being. And the most interesting character, ladies and gentlemen, on that particular international mediation course was a Nigerian. He was large, rotund, and he turned out to be a Nigerian chief. He wasn't too keen on the practicalities of mediation, if I may put it that way. He didn't seem to take any notes at all, but I imagine that he was swatting up overnight quite considerably because he was magnificent, because he had a presence. He knew who he was. He had, if you like, an inner power, an inner strength. And the mediations, simulated as they were, seemed to take on a whole new course when, as we discovered, Chief, whatever his name was, was in charge. I want to put it to you that each and every one of you in this room, whether involved in mediation in a regular way or just from time to time when it crosses your path, or often as those of us who know I speak as a father of five and grandfather of five when the little conflict occurs in every home, does it not? When those opportunities to mediate come, never, ever forget the inner power and strength that you have. So long as you're prepared to operate with integrity, so long as you're prepared to operate with courage, so long as you're prepared to stay open to possibility, to be open-hearted to what might be coming around. You referred to that, Charlie, that moment sometimes when you're in the middle of a mediation, you don't know where to go. You were suggesting to us that we ask a question or we phrase something and, and we bring the greatness out of the other person. 
And that's what I wanted to refer to in relation to our work at Columba 1400. Some of you may be graduates of Columba 1400. It's an international leadership <laughs> center that uh, operates with its headquarters on the Isle of Skye, and it has uh, a base in Loch Lomond, I'm delighted to say, so the highlands and lowlands. And we've celebrated over 10,000 graduates uh, in the last 15 years, all of whom have uh, learned a code of uh, values, of awareness, of focus, of creativity, integrity, and perseverance in service, very much akin to your work, David, and congratulations to you and your colleagues and all that you are doing and will continue to do with increasing support. We have a center in Australia, we have one in South Africa, and we're operating now in 80 townships, 80 townships, 80 schools and 80 townships across South Africa, where there are over 3,000 graduates in South Africa. And it all comes back to the inner power, the inner presence of those who are alongside other people's youngsters, giving them time, giving them time, as you know, to develop, to hear their own inner voice, to, if you like, to change their own lives from within. Our mantra, and I'm conscious that we're limited in time today, but our mantra is from the writings of John Buchan, the great Scottish writer who would say that our task in leadership our task in leadership is not to put the greatness back into humanity, not to put the greatness back into humanity, witness our educational system, which is often someone behind a desk giving knowledge out and you get marked on that knowledge, that particular knowledge. Our task in leadership, said John Buchan, is not to put the greatness back into humanity, but to elicit it for the greatness is there already. Yeah, you can see people nodding. Our task in mediation as fellow mediators is not to put the greatness back into humanity. It's not to rush to fix. It's to take time to have the silence and to be unafraid of the silence. Our task in mediation is not to put the greatness back into humanity, but to elicit it for the greatness is there already. For we never can tell, as Frere Roger of Tézé would say, we never can tell how the little that we communicate might find a resonance, uh, in French far better, résonance, the little that we communicate to another person, particularly to another person's child, may find a résonance that may last or touch their soul and last their whole life long. And that is the privilege, that is the joy, is it not, of getting on the front foot of mediation, well away from the litigation and arbitration that so often dominates our troubled land, our increasingly divided. We live in a binary society, them and us. There's never been a better time to be a mediator, domestically, professionally, and personally. Some of you may remember the BAFTAs of a couple of years ago, when Dame Helen Mirren, with her characteristic forthright way, came to the stage and very sensibly thanked her husband for staying with her for so long. Not a bad thing to do in a BAFTA performance, I don't think. Pretty unusual in BAFTA as well. Anyhow, she then said, I would like to dedicate this award tonight, some of you may remember it, to someone who, at, when I was 12, saw something in me that no one else had said, because the academic system of school had passed me by completely passed me by. But this person saw something in me that nobody else had, said, uh, had, had seen. We never can tell how the little that we communicate may find a resonance in the soul of another person, another person's child that may last their whole life long. And she said, this is to Alice Welding. She was my drama teacher. When I was failed to get a part or I was deciding upon a part, Difficulties in my career and things weren't, I would go and see Miss, uh, Miss Welding. She died a fortnight ago, aged 102. But this is for her. And then with typical Helen Mirren style, she said, now come on, put your hand up if there's someone in your life out there. Don't look left or right. Someone in your life who touched you in such a way. And a whole forest of hands went up in the Royal Opera House. You see, we never can tell, can we? Whether it's in mediation or our interaction with others, how the little that we communicate may find a resonance that may last in their souls their whole life long. I was reminded of that when I was with Drew's family this weekend with Elizabeth, my wife, and uh, the girls, Katie, nearly seven, and uh, Amy, now five, big five, they were telling me about Cinderella, and she, they said, you know, Granddad, the thing about Cinderella is to have courage and be kind. <laughs> Woo! Have courage and be kind. And I said, well, thank you. I'm going to tell Daddy's conference that. <laughs> if you're to be a mediator, 
We need to have courage, don't we? Because sometimes it's pretty scary and we need to be kind. Maybe that's what Aesop in one of his fables noticed when he, the story of an outer garment and the wind against the sun, do you remember that one? And the wind got the first chance to get the outer garment to be taken off the person and the wind blew and blew and blew and did everything and the outer garment person just sort of hunkered down and then the sun, the warmth of kindness came out and gradually it became kinder and more understanding or whatever and the sweat came out of the brow of the person in the outer garment and the coat was taken off. Have courage and be kind. Maybe that's what Nelson Mandela meant when he spoke at his inauguration in 1994. Who will forget that? When at the final stanza he borrowed the words of um, the, uh, an American writer when he was talking about um, your playing small does not serve the world. Playing to the to the, to the world, really, saying it to his fellow South Africans, endeavoring to create the rainbow nation, but to the world, he said this. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who are we to be good, talented, Fabulous. When I was brought up in the west of Scotland, I could hear people saying, who are you? It's a Scottish disease, I think. Who are you to be brought up? Who are you? Nandela has the answer, however. He says, when he asked the question, who are you to be brilliant, talented, and, and fabulous? He said, actually, who are you not to be? Because, he said, you're playing small does not serve the world. And in parentheses, this world needs more and more mediation. This world of ours needs more and more people like yourselves who are prepared with courage to be kind and enable other people's lives to be all the better for your presence, your quiet, humble presence in their lives. He also said, when you give yourself permission to shine, you automatically give others permission to do the same. For fellow Scots amongst us, that's a bit of a let out, isn't it? It's almost like a a way in which we can be proud of what we're doing without feeling we're showing off. Agreed? When you give yourself permission to shine, you automatically give others permission to do the same. So, ladies and gentlemen, your playing small does not serve the world. And that's certainly not what the Scottish Centre for Conflict Resolution stands for. Timely, of the moment, and ready to serve the people of Scotland and beyond. Glasgow 2014 will forever be in the memory, will it not, of the most successful Commonwealth Games of all time, thus far. I was uh, fortunate enough to get a couple of tickets and with five children and uh, a wife completely disinterested in sport. Uh, she was off limits, if you know what I mean. But the five children, who would I take? Well, our second daughter, Drew's uh, younger sister, Maggie, was about to leave for an international educational assignment with her young family. And, uh, if you have uh, those sorts of situations in your life, they're a bit sort of early, unsettling and traumatic. So I said, Maggie, would you like to come? And Maggie came with me and we had a fabulous evening at uh, the opening ceremony. Some of you may have been there, some of you may have seen it on the, on, the, on the box, on television or broadcast. And suddenly I noticed that Rod Stewart had got up on the, on the stage. Now I haven't kept in touch with Rod Stewart either personally or in listening for quite a while. I know most of his classics, if you know what I mean. But he started singing a song that I had a clue. But the person next to me was word perfect. And tra la la la, she was giving it stick. And then there came a moment when she, uh, Rod Stewart says these words. He says, um, thank you for the faith. Thank you for the patience. Thank you for the helping hand. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the guidance. Thank you for the tartan pride. And my wee girl, well, she's 35 now, she hugged me and we cried. So on behalf of all those whom you are mediating, on behalf of those who you have mediated and helped in their lives significantly, and I can see we've got some real stars of mediation in this room, on behalf of those who in the future you will mediate, because like the Greeks, we're seed sowers. 
Seed sowers under the shades of whose trees we may never sit. Say that again. We're seed sowers under the shades of whose trees we may never sit. Thank you for your work. Thank you for the faith. Thank you for the patience. Thank you for the helping hand. Thank you for the love that you show to others, other people's children, in your mediation. Thank you for the guidance. And thank you for the tartan pride.